quite possibly the biggest movie of all time. Does it live up to their hype, or does it falter a bit? Let's find out. What's up, it's Film Friends, and I just saw a little movie called Avengers Endgame last night, and I'm very excited to reveal my thoughts on it, starting with the first category I want to discuss, the direction and visuals. Let's get right into this. So... Obviously, the visuals are going to be fantastic in this movie. It's directed by Joan Anthony Russo, and they just are such great directors on the big, big cinematic scale with these massive MCU movies. They demonstrated that with Captain America, Winter Soldier, Civil War, and Infinity War, each escalating in size and grandeur, and this continues that upward climb. I don't know if there's any higher they can go. This is probably the apex, and it is just a visual treat. It's a lot of splendor just watching the action sequences, which are a few, which I think makes sense in the film. There shouldn't be too many. And I found they were very cool in the demonstrating the different characters' capabilities. It was very well shot, and the cinematography was very fantastic. I love showing off the different worlds. It was very well done in terms of that. Nothing like particularly blew me away, I would say, besides like a couple fight sequences, but it was still really well done. And the big fight sequence at the end, which everybody's going to be talking about, is just awesome to watch, though I do think it goes on a bit too long. And though it's fun to watch just a massive sequence, I think it can get a bit boring in my opinion at least. I know people love action sequences, but I like dialogue a bit more, and I feel like even though it's awesome to see such like an awesome fight, like Captain America versus Thanos and all of this, it could get a bit old at times. I felt like it got a little bit repetitive as they went through each character, and it's a little tedious in that regards, which will be a common thread I'll talk about later, but overall I thought it was really good with the direction and visuals. The action scenes are excellent, even though there aren't as many as Infinity War and other MCU movies, so for this category, I'm giving it a very strong 4.5 out of 5. Let's move right along and discuss acting character development. It's not hard to believe that the acting is phenomenal in this movie. All the actors are very familiar with their characters, they suit them perfectly, they know how they act. I'm not even sure, I don't think there's a single new character in this movie, which is kind of odd. Maybe I'm missing somebody, but overall, these actors do a great job. They really just are so true to the characters. I love that about it. Like, there was no scenes in this movie where I was like, what? That seems so uncharacteristic of name any character. Like, I thought that was really great. And though I think there wasn't really a ton of, like, arcs during the film and character development of each individual character during it, save for a few exceptions, like Thor again, who in both of these Avengers movies, I think does such a great job. Chris Hemsworth was amazing. And they do such a great job of just developing him. Further, he was probably the star of the show for me. Iron Man was great too. Captain America had a good amount, and Ant Man was pretty good too. The couple other characters, but I thought overall that it was very good in terms of just overall just the characters that are already developed. But I thought they didn't really do anything new with them, which is a bit unfortunate. I thought it was a bit of a missed opportunity. I know there's a lot to do with it. And then the other big criticism I have for this category is with Thanos and. I feel like he was very underutilized, so this is going to be some spoilers. Anytime there's a spoiler bar coming up in my video, that means there's spoilers, so make sure to unmute it if you haven't seen it yet, because you really don't want this movie spoiled to you. Anyway, so with Thanos, I feel that he was very underutilized. He was not in the movie much, and I thought that was almost smart, like when he was killed off in the first five minutes. I thought that was like kind of cool and surprising in a really good way. But then when they brought him back from the time travel and he was in the fight, I thought he just didn't really do anything. Like, his motives were kind of the same. I thought they were kind of just going on Thanos, like, just automatic. Like, oh, let's just have him say self-righteous lines about how he saved the universe. And it really felt like they didn't dive deep into him like they did in Infinity War. I thought that was unfortunate. I mean, there's, of course flawed logic with his plan. Many people have known that. And I think in some ways, which I'll talk about a bit later with the plot, the Infinity War and Endgame kind of put themselves into a corner in terms of some of the plots that they chose and the main villain plot because there are a lot of holes and flawed logic in it. But nevertheless, Thanos was an amazing character, maybe the best MCU villain, but I thought they didn't really do anything with him here. And then when he's saying about how he's going to like wipe out this universe and build a new one, that felt kind of a little almost like a petty in a weird way. Like it just didn't sit with me well. It kind of felt like they were just trying to artificially add stakes and it didn't feel natural at all. It was just like a sudden drop, but it didn't feel like it had that weight. And so I just was kind of upset with how they used Thanos in it. But overall, I thought the characters were very well done. I'm still giving it a solid 4 out of 5 for this category. Finally, it's time to talk about the story elements of plot pacing script and theme. 
this has always been my most important category because film, in its deepest sense, is trying to tell a story. And this is really what makes or breaks a movie. And uh, I can't say the most positive things about Endgame in this category. It's a mix, for sure. So, I'm going to start with plot, which is pretty much where nearly all of my faults with Endgame lie, save for a couple things in the character development that honestly don't really affect my overall score that much. So, with the plot, I feel like this movie can be best described as like five, maybe four, very simple, kind of almost tedious plots and a little bit repetitive stuffed into one movie. And it felt like for some reason, it just didn't justify the three hours. Like Infinity War felt like a director's vision, like a one plot with a bunch of subplots that all converge and it was very well done. While this kind of felt like a bit fanfare like where they're trying to appease the fans, and it's a fun watch. It's very fun. I can't say that enough. It is an awesome movie. It's so exciting. You need to watch it for sure. And I think it's still a solid movie, but at the end of the day, it didn't feel as much like a singular vision going forward, more like a bunch of things that they want to appease the fans with. Almost more like Star Wars The Force Awakens than like... Infinity War, per se, and that's not exactly what I was going for. I was really hoping it would be more like Infinity War, but a different type of movie, and it was different, but I thought it was kind of a mess in this regard. It's like, it was all over the place, and it some of it is just wacky, and in some ways that makes it even more exhilarating, but when it comes to the day, objectively speaking, I don't think it's the best movie. I know people are going to love it, and people want to love it. I want to love it, too, but... I just don't think it is amazing like I was hoping it would be. So, getting into that, I'm going to talk about some spoilers with the plot. So, I think the five plots are kind of like this. It starts with basically continuing from directly from Infinity War, and it continues that really nice plot. I thought that was great. I love the exposition of this movie. Maybe even one of the best parts of the film overall, which that's not the best thing for a three-hour movie, but hey, it starts on great footing. I think that's really good. Then it jumps five years forward, which was a natural step. That made sense. And basically, it kind of gets very light, surprisingly, and very comedic, and it becomes just recruiting all these the different people back so they can try to do the time travel thing, because that's after they find Paul Rudd, who gets out of the, um, the quantum realm, and they realize they can use the quantum realm for time travel, because he doesn't age at all, and he felt like it was like five hours when he was actually gone for five years. So, that makes sense. It's very smartly done in that regards. But then it kind of just gets a little bit repetitive, because it's like, oh, we find this character, we find this character, we find this character. And luckily, there was a lot of great jokes in this section, and almost all the jokes in this movie hit, which is very good. That's touching on the script right there. And surprisingly, it's a very comedic movie in many regards. Don't think it's the best balance of drama and comedy, as we'll talk about a little bit later with the tone and the editing, but nevertheless, this section is very enjoyable as it jumps around to different locations and different people, but at the end of the day, I feel like there wasn't really much plot here, and it got a bit repetitive, and it went on for too long, even if it's enjoyable to watch, and that's a trend with lots of this movie. It's very fun for fans to watch, but I don't think it's the best filmmaking and storytelling possible. So, then the third section is where they basically go into the past in different movies to try to reverse it and get the stones back so they can snap everybody back into existence, then return the stones back to their original place. So, I don't think the time travel is handled as well as it could have been in this film, because it's kind of, like, they don't really explain how they use the quantum realm exactly. That's not necessary, because it's such a long movie, they don't need to spend a bunch of time on time travel logistics. And in some ways, even though it's kind of a necessary step for Endgame, I'm upset they introduced time travel into it, because it just messes everything up, like X-Men Days of Future Past, which is a great movie, but it just confuses the timeline. They mostly avoided it, I think they did a pretty good job overall, but I feel like there should have been more, like, consequences for the timeline changing because they did alter some stuff a bit like very small but still enough substantially in the past while they were gone and that didn't resonate with me as well as it could have and I thought even though it was cool to go back into previous movies it felt like this movie was relying too much on other movies like Infinity War and this both inevitably you need to watch other movies in order to see this they're not complete standalones but I thought Infinity War had a clear beginning middle and end and it was its own movie with a very solid plot while this I feel like just relies so much on the greatness of other movies and I think that hurts a bit and yes it's supposed to be a culmination of all these 20 
one movie is now 22 with Endgame. And that's very clever how they go back to previous movies and you see other characters from different movies and previous ones like Alexander Pierce, who was in Winter Soldier, actually being in the original Avengers, you know, in 2012 with the Battle of New York. I thought that was cool. And it was very exciting as a fan to watch, but I don't think that makes it a great movie. Yes, it's enjoyable, but sometimes it did go on for too long. I feel like this was like over an hour of the film, and that just shouldn't have been, because it got kind of slow, because at the end of the day, they're just looking for stones. And yes, it's necessary for Thanos to find out about their plan, so that was the one key factor of going back into the past, that he finds out about Morag, where they're looking for the Space Stone, and that alerts him, and that's when he sends the past Nebula into the future, and that's basically how he gets the future later, and that made sense, that was necessary for the plot, of course, but I thought some of the other stuff were just expanded too long, and I guess I know the past, all this had to do with the theme a lot, which is a largely about redemption, and the characters really find out who they are. It focuses largely on the main six Avengers from the original Avengers movie, and I thought that was great. And, like, I feel like you do learn a bit more about Thor and Captain America and Iron Man from them going back into the past and seeing past family members, past lovers, etc. And I thought that was very cool. I love the humanity in that. But I thought sometimes it just went on for a bit too long and did get, sadly, a bit repetitive. At least it didn't work for me. I know tons of other people did work for it. Fourth part is that massive battle, which I talked about previously. Very cool looking, but I think it goes on for too long. Then finally, there's resolution that's really long, and this brings me to like the pacing. I thought it could be a bit choppy at times, like after the big battle, it did get like a bit like, it just felt like it went on way too long afterwards. And yes, I know there's some important resolution things to do. And I thought the overall the ending was very solid. Like the things that happened to Captain America and Iron Man are very, very well done. But at the same time, it felt a little bit choppy. So, done with all that plot summarizing and analyzing. So, overall, I think, yeah, it's a bit choppy. I don't think the five sections meld together as well as they could have, which is a bit unfortunate. And I think sometimes the breaks, like this the pacing, the breaks from scene to scene are a bit odd and the tone shifts a little bit too much. Like, I thought Infinity War perfectly balanced the humor and drama because humor kind of just completely escaped in that last 30 minutes. Well, this is kind of just all over the place and it is just wacky and it makes it very enjoyable in that regards, but it is feeling a bit messy at times when, like, there's just, like, some comedic scene, like, where they're on, like, let's see, the Guardians of the Galaxy or, like, Thor or something, randomly like, on a ship. And then it just jumps this really dark spot where like Hawkeye's like reminiscing about his family or something. And in some ways it just felt a bit odd at times. And also the shifts often made it feel a bit convoluted just plot wise. Because you're going from completely different sections of the plot but it didn't feel like it had as much flow and editing prowess as Infinity War did. And this is a very hard task to edit. I'm not saying that. But I thought they could have done a bit better, as Infinity War showed, they do have the talents to edit such an ambitiously, just massive movie. And so I touched upon it a little bit earlier with the spoilers, but just with the non-spoilers, the theme, I thought it is solid. It's very subtle. I thought it could have been a little bit more prominent in that it just like persisted a little bit more throughout the film. But it was there, and there's a ton of emotionally affecting scenes, and individual scenes I think are great, but the overall I feel like the movie isn't always the sum of its parts, because it is kind of choppy with the plot, and it feels like they're merging two things together, or five things together even, that don't really fit. And this, the script, usually is very solid, but obviously I don't think it's as good as Infinity War, because sometimes, even when it gets repetitive and tedious, with the plot, I feel like the script could have saved it from being that way, and sometimes it did, and I forgot that it was just being really repetitive as they search for different stones, etc., but sometimes it just lied a little bit and felt generic and kind of phoned in, and I started like thinking about, well, what time is it? How far am I into the movie? And that's something I never experienced in Infinity War, so that was unfortunate. Overall, this category, I know I complain a lot about different things. I'm still giving it a solid 3.5 out of 5 for the story. The plot is the big weakness. The script is overall pretty good. Pacing is kind of a bit wonky, and the theme's pretty solid, too. Yeah, I know there's a lot of criticisms, but there's a lot great with it still. And overall... I think this movie is a massive experience, it is a pop culture moment, it is fanfare, and it is glorious fanfare, it's a glorious mess, but at the same time I have to look at it as a movie, and I don't think it's the best standalone movie, I'm very disappointed in that regards, 
Subjectively, there was only like maybe a couple times where I felt a little bit bored by the tediousness of the plot, but objectively, I think there are some major criticisms as I touched upon earlier. Overall, highly recommend you watch this movie. I hope you enjoyed my review. I'm going to be giving Avengers Endgame a solid 4 out of 5. So, not amazing, but still a great movie. And I just really am excited to see what the future holds for the MCU. I'm a bit sad about all these 22 movies ending. And this really definitely leaves you in your emotions as all these very emotional and touching scenes come together. Maybe the movie doesn't work as much as a whole and isn't as cohesive as I was hoping it would be in terms of all these scenes and the emotional ones coming together. But nevertheless, it is a very solid movie. So that's going to wrap up my review. Make sure to like and subscribe for more awesome movie content. I'm going to rank my top 10 super movies ever coming very soon. This is Film Frenzy signing off. Bye.